does God pay attention to our prayers even when we sin? What happens when we rebel against God? The story of Samson helps us see how much God loves us, even when we fail terribly in life. When we genuinely call out to him, he hears us and answers. Samson had all the right qualifications to be the true hero of Israel. He had a great start in life. He was a miracle baby. His parents were having difficulty conceiving. In Judges 13, we are told an angel visited, letting them know that not only would they be having a baby, but that he would be the deliverer of Israel. Speaking about Samson, the angel said in verse 5, The boy is to be a Nazarene, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. The country was in dire need of that kind of hero. And his parents were careful to follow instructions the angel gave them. The strict Nazarite upbringing meant no alcohol and no haircuts, ever. Judges 13, 24 says that Samson grew and God blessed him. Samson was given superhuman strength. Nobody could beat him. Samson was in a class of his own. He was perfectly positioned to be the hero deliverer that Israel so badly needed. But sadly, there was a catch. Samson's superhuman power went to his head. He got cocky and flaunted his powers. Even worse, his great strength did nothing to counteract his weakness for suspect foreign women. When Samson was of marrying age, it would have made a lot of sense to find a nice Israelite bride to build a life with. Someone that would support him and help hold him accountable in his role as a leader for his country. But Samson had a thing for living dangerously. He had no interest in dating close to home. Instead, he left Israel and headed for the hills of Philistia, or Philistia, where he hooked up with a woman from enemy territory. Brushing aside his parents' objections about the woman not being an Israelite, the overconfident young Samson decided he was going to marry her and nothing was going to stop him. Even here, though, God, who gave Samson his strength, did not abandon him. In fact, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. In the run-up to the wedding, Samson had a pretty intense adventure. A lion tried to attack him. Rather than try to escape like a normal human being, Samson stood his ground and counterattacked aggressively. Sadly, Marvel Studios was not yet around to film the man versus beast fight. Samson ripped the lion to pieces with his bare hands. Having vanquished his foe, he then continued on his journey, not even bothering to tell his parents about the attack. One of the key reasons he didn't tell his parents about the attack is that he was near a vineyard when it happened. And you know what Samson should not go near, right? Vineyards, because he was a Nazarite. Here's where the story gets even crazier. As the wedding drew closer, Samson and his parents were traveling over to his fiancée's area for the festivities when they came across the carcass of the lion. Samson saw that bees now lived in the carcass, which is another thing he wasn't supposed to touch being a Nazarite. Without the slightest concern for the finer points of dine et dining etiquette, Samson grabbed some honey straight from the honeycomb in the dead lion. He even shared some with his parents. Just another day in the action-packed life of Samson. Not a man given to modesty, Samson decided to use his lion adventure as a way to have some fun with the wedding guests. So he came up with a riddle for his 30 groomsmen. But before he told them the riddle, Samson set up some ground rules. If they couldn't solve it, they had to give him 30 pieces of linen and garments. If things went the other way and they did solve the riddle, Samson would single-handedly have to give them the same amount of clothing. Needless to say, neither side wanted to lose. Samson went with a very cryptic riddle based on his lion attack. It is recorded in Judges 14, 14. It says, out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. There was no way the groomsmen would figure this one out. And they knew it. The 30 men were furious. They wanted to win no matter what the cost. So they told Samson's bride they would burn down her and her father's house unless the riddle was solved. Judges 14, 15 says, the men turned to her and said, coax your husband 
into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. This was more than she could bear. Samson could not take the pressure from his bride and gave her the answer to the riddle. She turned around and solved the riddle for the groomsmen. Angry that he now had to pay the groomsmen the 30 pieces of linen, Samson dramatically left his own wedding party for a Philistine coastal town called Ashkelon, where he slaughtered, you heard it, slaughtered 30, 30 Philistine men. He then paid the groomsmen back at his party with the clothes of the people he killed. Samson's troubles were far from over. His bride's father had taken advantage of his absence to marry her off to one of the groomsmen. You can't make this up. When Samson got back to the house, he wasn't allowed to see his wife. And her crafty dad tried to interest him in his wife's younger sister instead. Samson was livid and he wanted payback. In a violent rage, the strong man caught 300 foxes, tied them in pairs and attached torches to their tails. He then sent the foxes onto the fields of the Philistines. Chaos followed in the grain fields and olive groves of his enemies as they burned to the ground, destroying the livelihood of the Philistines. The vicious cycle picked up steam. The Philistines weren't about to let the arson attack go unanswered. They found Samson's wife and her father and burned both to death in a cruel act of revenge. Judges 15, 7, Samson responded saying, Since you've attacked like this, I swear that I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. Verse 8 says, He attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. Samson then sought shelter in a cave called the Rock of Etam. This would have been a good time to reflect, change course, and make a commitment to use his powers more productively. But power is seductive, and Samson was intoxicated with it. This unlikely hero's life was already proving a cautionary tale. It's easy to get derailed in life. It's easy to get drunk on power, to chase distractions and follow your ego. So many of us miss our calling and waste our lives chasing things that don't matter. Like Samson, we forget God as the source of our powers and instead use them selfishly. Rather than solving Israel's problems, Samson was rapidly closing more trouble. Word of his attacks on the Philistines, Philistines had spread. The Philistine army assembled and went to the tribe of Judah, insisting that 3,000 of their men deliver Samson to them. The deal that Samson struck with the men of Judah was carefully in, uh, structured. He agreed to be tied up, but the men of Judah had to agree not to kill Samson themselves. Following so far? So Samson was bound with two new ropes to prevent his escape and was then taken to be handed off to the Philistines. But right before the man had a chance to hand him over to the Philistine army, Samson broke free, snapping the new ropes. The enormously powerful Nazarite grabbed the dead donkey's jawbone and unleashed his fury on the Philistines, who just moments before had thought they'd outsmarted him. Armed with only the jawbone, Samson fought and killed 1,000 Philistines that day in his biggest attack yet. In Judges 15, 16, a triumphant Samson said, With a donkey's jawbone, I have made donkeys of them. With a donkey's jawbone, I have killed a thousand men. Samson was using his power, but seemed incapable of learning any lessons from his troubles. Sometime later, Samson decided it was time for another Philistine woman. This time, he went for a prostitute in the city of Gaza. Spotting an opportunity to trap Samson, his enemies were excited. Judges 16.2 says that they lay in wait for Samson, boldly telling themselves, At dawn we will kill him! They waited at the gate of the city. They figured they would ambush Samson as he left Gaza the following morning. The Nazarite had other ideas though. He wasn't staying in Gaza all night. Verse 3 of the same chapter says, But Samson lay there until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, 
together with the two posts and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and he carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Yet again, Samson had outmaneuvered his enemies through sheer strength, but his bad choices would catch up with him. The victorious Samson was soon in the arms of yet another Philistine woman. Delilah was beautiful, but not exactly loyal. And Samson was growing more and more careless, trusting the wrong people. He was about to let the wrong partner lead him down the path of no return. His relentless enemies decided to try to use Samson's new girlfriend against him. In Judges 16, 5, the Philistine rulers went to Delilah saying, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how he can overpower him so that we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. She agreed to the deal. Delilah was bad news. The people were mostly closely associated with having credible influence over our lives. More than we realize. And this power is even stronger when romance is involved. Delilah got right to work. She asked Samson to reveal why he was so strong. Samson was not about to tell her the truth, so he claimed binding him with fresh bowstrings would rob him of his strength. The Philistine woman waited until Samson fell asleep to make her move. As he slept, she tied him with seven new bowstrings supplied by his enemies. She then woke him up saying his enemies were closing in on him. The bowstrings were no match for her boyfriend though. Samson snapped them in an instant. Furious, Delilah accused him of lying to her and humiliating her. Yet again, she pushed for intel on how to tie him up. How can the same hero be so clever and strong and so stupid at the same time? This time, Samson claimed new ropes would do the trick. But when she tied him up with the rope, he once again broke free as she announced the Philistines were coming. Was he just playing with her? What was going on here? The dysfunctional romance continued as a head over heels in love, Samson kept entertaining Delilah's questions. Next, he told her that binding his hair in a weaver's loom was the answer. He claimed this would successfully restrain him. But of course, it didn't. Samson woke up, freed himself, and demolished the loom. Delilah wouldn't give up, though. And as she pressed him again, Samson finally lowered his defenses and told her the truth. As a Nazarite, a razor had never been used on his head. Cutting his hair would break the vow to God and rob him of his strength. True to form, Delilah waited until Samson was asleep, cut off his hair, and called the Philistines. This time, they easily captured the weakened Samson. Samson's weakness had finally caught up with him. Triumphantly, his enemies gouged his eyes out and assigned him humiliating prison labor where he had to turn a millstone, you know, a millstone to grind grain. Samson had no one to blame but himself. He had squandered the gifts God had given him. His power had been used selfishly to advance his own interests. His incredible strength got to his head and his weakness for women had ruined him. Sometimes you and I may feel a little like Samson did in prison. We know we've messed up. We've missed tremendous opportunities. We've lost our way, wasted our God-given talents. It's a horrible feeling and the consequences can be brutal. Just as Samson lost his power, his sight and his freedom, bad life choices have a way of catching up with us. But don't give up. You are never, ever too far gone for a comeback. God is still God. He still has the power to turn things around. He wants to help you. Is there something to take away from Samson's life? Well, if there is, this is it. Prison was not the end of the story. God was still there for Samson despite his failures and loss. After Samson had been in prison for some time, the Philistines decided to throw a huge temple feast to honor their god, Dagon. They decided to drag in Samson to entertain them at the temple. Though completely blinded, Samson sensed an opportunity to set things straight and avenge the evil the Philistines had done. 
His hair had started growing out again, and Samson asked to be brought to the supporting pillars of the temple. Then he turned to God as never before, asking for one last moment of strength. Judges 16, 28 says, Samson prayed to God, saying, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. In that moment, God recognized Samson's faith and remorse. This imperfect Bible hero was not too far gone for God to forgive him. His mistakes could not prevent God from listening to him as he sincerely turned from his sad past and asked for strength again. God gave Samson power in that moment. In Judges 16, 30, we see that Samson cried out, let me die with the Philistines. Then in his most heroic life accomplishment, Samson pushed on the temple pillars with all he had. They toppled, bringing the entire temple, crashing down and killing all 3,000 guests, including Samson. There is sadness in the story of Samson, sadness in how far he strayed from God, sadness at what he could have been. But God loved Samson just as he loves us unconditionally. He answers every prayer from a sincere heart, no matter what has happened in the past. 2,000 years ago, another deliverer was born in Israel. This one didn't waste a single opportunity. In his short life on earth, Jesus was faithful to his calling, no matter what happened. He gave his life to save a close relationship with you. Even when you are in rebellion against God, genuinely call out to him for help and he will hear you. In the whole story that we read and we see from Samson, despite being far from God, there is not a prayer that the Bible says that Samson did, which God did not answer. And if you have been far, or if you know somebody who stepped far from God at this very moment, send this message to them. Tell them to listen to this because God is ready to answer their prayers. If you need someone to pray for you, then get in touch with us, hopetv.org. We are here to help you connect with Jesus and understand His love for you. We cannot wait to hear from you.